and our mission statement is, is that we are a company committed to acquiring and advancing artificial intelligence, machine learning technologies that addresses urgent societal needs. And that, that's our focus, um, is, is finding the, the technologies that aren't, you know, cute and fun or the next, uh, you know, blackjack game that uh, the, the computer that can beat the human, um, but finding the, the technologies out there that rely on artificial intelligence and that address, you know, urgent needs in today's society. All right, welcome everybody to Wall Street Reporter's next super stock company spotlight. This is where we bring you those stocks which have that 10x to 100x upside potential. Companies going after massive multi-billion dollar market opportunities that are at a key inflection point in their growth trajectory. And there is multiple catalysts in place. Today, we are back with AIML Innovation, stock symbol AIMLF, Tim Daniels, the chairman uh, and what's really exciting about this is the name of the company stands for Artificial Intelligence Machine Learning. So this company is right at the epicenter of what I believe is going to be the generational megatrend, and that is AI, artificial intelligence. Uh, Tim, welcome to the program. Thanks, Jack. It's always a pleasure being on. Uh, Tim, I want to, I want to, you know, start off by, you know, we have a lot of new people who are going to be watching this. So can you tell our audience exactly, you know, what's your business model? What does AIML do? What do you do in the you know AI space? Sure. Okay. When we started this company four years ago, we were looking at uh, the next big mega trend and, uh, and and settled on artificial intelligence. Maybe we were a little bit ahead of the curve, but uh, now I think we're we're settling right into the sweet spot where um, uh, AIML is on everybody's lips these days. Uh, because of you know chat GPT and and several other developments, um, it's it, as you said it's right in our name um, AIML uh, uh, Innovations Inc. Um, and our, the opening line of every news release that we put out uh, and our mission statement is is that we are a company committed to acquiring and advancing artificial intelligence machine learning technologies that addresses urgent societal needs. And that, that's our focus, um, is, is finding the, the technologies that aren't, you know, cute and fun or the next, uh, you know, blackjack game that uh, the, the computer that can beat the human, um, but finding the, the technologies out there that rely on artificial intelligence and that address, you know, urgent needs in today's society. So, okay, so he, this is an important distinction. So basically, you know, the focus of AIML is, you know, solving the big problem. So it's not about, you know, creating a little social media thing, but it's really about, you know, solving problems, you know, the major challenges uh, facing, uh, you know, society today. You know, Tim, I, I think it's also very important. So the company you started, you mentioned uh, earlier that you started the company because, you know, you saw that AI was going to be the next big thing about, four, you know, roughly four, four years ago. That your background has been in, you know, as a VC, as, as a technology investor in, in corporate finance. And essentially, you've, so your talent really is, and again, the focus of these interviews is to get to know the, the, the you know, the company leadership. That's the whole idea, right? Because ultimately, you know, the business, what I found, and I'm sure what you found is the business really doesn't matter. It's the leadership. It's the CEO. The, those are the guys that I, because they can see what's coming. They can pivot, they can, whatever it is. We've seen Airbnb started, I think they started selling cereal. That didn't work. And they pivoted to selling, uh, you know, uh, renting out the rooms and now became a multi-billion dollar company. So it, it's the leadership. It's not the business model. The business model can change. But essentially, I want people to kind of get to, to know your, your thought process. And essentially, you've been a, uh, sort of, again, in, in the corporate finance sector. So you're your skill set is identifying trends early on and investing in those trends and riding those trends. So can you talk a little bit about some of the, 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 the winners that you've had so people can understand where you're coming from? And then we'll get back into the AIML story and, and you know, potentially that could be the next one. Sure. So I, I've been in the uh, investment world and corporate finance world for uh, uh, 
about 35 years now. Uh, unfortunately, it's been, been a long time, uh, but I've had my, my share of successes in that. Um, I've, I've uh, been involved both uh, on the, uh, the, the brokerage world and uh, doing uh, corporate financings, uh, leading the underwriting department, um, uh, doing secondary financings and so on. And, and, and so uh, in that role, um, you know, we, uh, we got to see um, a lot of, you know, the best of the upcoming companies and we're able to distinguish what set aside, you know, those companies that uh, ultimately were, uh, uh, were huge successes from those that were maybe moderate successes or failures. And, and, and you hit the nail on the head. The one thing that uh, invariably is uh, a, a deciding factor in successful companies is the people behind it. What we found is that, you know, good people will find a way to make a deal work. You know, you gave the example of uh, Airbnb or another great example is Amazon. They sell, they started off selling books only and losing money on every book they sold. And look at where they are today because of Jeff Bezos and the team around him. Um, the one, I think most important skill that uh, every leader must have is knowing his own shortcomings and uh, and having the ability to surround himself with good people that um, uh, that 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 take up the the, the slack uh, where the the leader has his shortcomings. And I, I think that's one of my strong suits too, where uh, I have the ability to uh, um, uh, uh, to assess and 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 um and see the next trends coming i've done that you know quite successfully um within the resource sector within the biomedical sector uh real estate sector oil and gas um to name a few and we've had our, our share of wins with that um but it's always been based on surrounding ourselves with good people who know more than we do about that sector. And so I'll give you an example in this space with AIML Innovations. Um, my knowledge and background with respect to artificial intelligence is, is limited and I'm the first to admit that. Um, um, and so what I try to do is surround myself with people who have that, uh, that ability that I don't have. So for example, our chief technology officer. Tim, is, I uh, so you're, so for anybody that doesn't know, you're the chairman of the company. Yes, so that's right. Yeah. Big picture guy, then you have the, you have the whole leadership. But okay. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and I guess just to, to give your, your viewers, um, a little understanding. So AIML, uh, is. Um, basically a, a, a VC investment company. So what we have decided to do is find uh, worthy companies uh, in the AI space um, and invest in them as standalone entities under our, our common umbrella. And so the, the first couple of investments that we've made have been in the health tech sector um, because that was an area that was ripe for um, the, the application of artificial intelligence. But there's many, many other sectors that we continue to look at and that are uh, also ripe to benefit from artificial intelligence. And so the model is to um, uh, find those companies that are on, you know, the, 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 the cusp of, you know, completion of the R&D phase of their development and are breaking out into, uh, you know, the, the business development uh, uh, cycle um, uh, um, and, uh, and, and make strategic investments uh, in that fashion. Um, and so I was saying how, uh, uh, for example, um, you know, I brought in Bruce Matichak as our um, chief technology uh, officer. And Bruce um, has uh, about 25 years experience as a, a postgraduate uh, engineer um, in all phases of, um, uh, of uh, uh, electric engineering um, and software design. Um, more than a decade in artificial intelligence. And he's had several big wins. Um, probably his biggest success is a company that is uh, out in the world today and they're you know, a huge international company uh, that specializes in um, uh, security technology and the face uh, uh, recognition technology that they use was developed by Bruce and, and his team. Um, and that's one of several uh, very successful exits that, that Bruce has made in, in the, this, this field. So he's, he's so he's got a deep background in AI. Yeah. 
Okay, now, so, here's, so this is this is this is real, here's so here's the thing I find fascinating because I'm looking at this purely, you know, I'm coming to this from an investment, you know, an investor standpoint, right? Sure. And I'm looking at this, uh, you know, I see basically the stock is, you know, it's got a five million dollar valuation, right? So it's basically it's almost like a, it's almost like you're getting this thing for free. It's basically been right <laughs> as a public, it's de risk right? You know, the, the stock is five cents currently American, uh, yeah. and you're really at the right at the epicenter of you know the ai revolution uh now mm -hmm. here's what's interesting now you know tim you know this because you've been in, the, in this business you know as, as have i and you know anytime you see a, a big new trend a mega trend happen you know a lot of companies they try to you know hop on board and you know ride the coattails and they start changing the name of their company they start adding now we start to see companies add ai to their names you know exactly. last they were doing i don't know there were uh, you know in the lithium business or whatever i don't know selling plant-based right. foods now they're ai well everybody yeah. added, it's just like in, in the dot-com era you know everybody whatever it was they added dot-com to their name uh exactly. but what's interesting is you've been in this you've been in ai all along from day one this has been exactly. an ai company and, but what i want to bring to investors attention is this i think this is the key thing you're taking your approach essentially is multiple shots on goal essentially you have a portfolio approach to right. ai yeah absolutely absolutely and, and, so you and you're starting with you're starting in the health tech space and we're going to dive yeah. into that in just a little bit we're going to talk about some of your first investments but essentially do you see this as, as am i correct in saying that that essentially ai ml the focus it's basically it's a it's a uh a, i don't know I've, if you if, if to use the word is it a, a v is it a a venture capital company is a technology development company, but with a focus yeah. on AI and you're starting off with the health, like, give us your vision for what this is. Yeah, so we are, um, I, I, I guess, essentially a venture capital company, um, you know, for lack of a, a you know, a one single term that better, you know, describes us. Um, AIML is, the, you know, the parent company, um, uh, the, the publicly listed company. And underneath that, we, um, uh, take pieces in whole or in part, uh, for example, Health Gauge, um, our first investment, um, uh, which is in the, the health tech industry, um, is a wholly owned subsidiary. Um, other companies that, that uh, we've looked at or, or are looking at, uh, we may own all of them or we may own uh, pieces of them or, or you know, more or less of, of certain markets. Uh, for example, Tech to Heal, which was our second investment, we have uh, roughly 10% of the global market, um, but we have uh, about 75% of the North American market, which is our, our sweet spot. So, um, so we have a, a mixed bag of, uh, of holdings, um, but each one of those companies are uh, standalone um, uh, separate companies underneath the, uh, you the know, AI um, uh, umbrella. Yeah, Tim, this is crazy. So the company has multiple shots on goal. You got a five million dollar valuation. Uh, mm -hmm. By the way, Tim, I don't want to give a plug. You know, I, I wrote this book, Ten Bagger Blueprint. It's all about you know, you know the system for finding stocks that have a, you know ten x upside. You know, I've had a whole bunch of them, and they all have certain things in common. You probably know, you know, you've seen enough of these. You know, they all have certain com things in common, and but one of the things I look for is getting in. You got to get into these stocks. Uh, mm -hmm. The price is everything. You know, the, you got to get in at the right price. Uh, because right. everything is risky. Any it could go to zero, right? AML in theory could go to zero, right? Possibly. You sure, know? sure. Uh, but when a stock is five million valuation at a nickel, it's really been de risked. And especially when you yeah. see the upside. So it's an asymmetric bet. This is what I want to yeah. emphasize. The way I'm looking at this is it's an asymmetric bet. You only you don't need to get everything right. You just need to be right a little bit for yeah. to have a massive effect. Because again, you're getting this because the AI sector, we're seeing stocks get crazy valuations now right it's a hyped up area there's no question i see other companies i don't want to mention any names that are don't, are not much more advanced than, a, than aiml i mean really they don't have that much more and they're trading at you know uh 75 80 million dollar valuations and this is the micro cap sector we're not even talking about you know the big guys right we're talking about the micro cap right. sector right companies that you know are losing you know 20 million a year people i'm not going to mention the names but you know people know which ones i'm talking about and, yeah. and here we have so you're trading at you know a fraction you know ten, yeah. you know five literally almost like five cents on the dollar so i see yeah. that you know i see that as a major major um 
you know, as that's that's one of the key investment highlights for me is is the sure. valuation. Multiple shots on goal. You got this asymmetric setup where you know you're paying five million for this, and if any one of these things work out, it, it could be a moonshot. It could be, you know, I mean, yeah. a billion yeah. dollars. I mean, you could, you know, the health gauge business that you have, which we're going to talk about in a second, how big that opportunity is. Um, yeah. So any one of those things could be a unicorn. I mean, you have yeah. basically a unicorn farm. You have, yeah. is it fair to say that essentially that, that AIML is an AI unicorn farm? You're developing these potential. I, I'd like to, I'd like to think of it that way. That's for sure. Um, we were um, very, you know, discriminating in the companies that we look at and uh, um, our due diligence process is very long and very involved. Um, you know, to give you an example, there's uh, a company that I'm, uh, um, possibly on the cusp of investing in. Um, we've been in a due diligence process with them now for almost two years, um, but we, we think that's necessary. We, we we believe that that you know we need to you know to to you know turn over every stone and make sure that the company is what we think it is and that it's a good fit within our stable before we make the investment. And so we are very careful and we do believe that when we do finally pull the trigger on these investments, that they do have the potential to become a, a unicorn. Um, can I add a few other things, Jack? First of all, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, um, I, I've had the pleasure of reading Ted Ten Bagger, your book, and found it very uh, informative, even for someone like myself, who's been in the, the markets for, for decades. Um, there were, uh, you know, several points in there that, uh, um, that, that I found very helpful and very useful. Um, you made a, a remark earlier uh, regarding that we've been de-risked because of our market cap, and that's very true, um, but that's only one aspect of it. We've also been de-risked because of how far our technology and, and business cycle has advanced in the last two years since we've started this project. Um, since you know, since we took on HealthGage as a, as the first company uh, in in our portfolio, um, uh, HealthGage itself, the 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 technology has gone from um, what we would call an MVP, which is a a minimum viable product. So it's it's working, but it's kind of a a, a 1.0 um, or or let, you know to put it in. A, uh, uh, terminology that uh, you know viewers might be able to relate to better. Um, you know, the the it, it went from a Model T from day one to now it's a, a Cadillac. Um, so we, that that's how the product has uh, progressed over the last couple of years. The the bugs have been worked out of uh, the hardware and out of the AI software. We've completed our patent work on uh, on our technology, and so and and we've developed our uh, our our business development cycle, you know, tremendously. So, so it, it's been de-risked, not only because our market cap is, 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 is tiny, like you've mentioned, but also because now we're ready to break out. Now yeah. the, you know, the hard, expansive, slow, risky work of developing the technology, developing uh, a, a niche in the market um, are, is behind us. And now it's, you know, uh, uh, full, full on on the uh, business development. So, you know, and, so and this is, it, 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 Tim, thank you for clarifying this, because, again, I'm only thinking like purely from the investor standpoint. Right. But the reality is this. There, I mean, I'm talking about from the stock standpoint, but the, what you're yeah. saying is is 100 percent on the money. And that also is one of the other key things is that, you know, the 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 company when you the company went public, it might have gone public a little bit too early almost. I mean, it, you know, in theory, right. the market was right there. It made sense, but the reality is, it was probably a little bit early because the company was the 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 core business, the health gauge part, the health gauge which thing, which is what everybody bought the stock based on. That was right. still early stage, but still, the stock was trading at a dollar, but over a dollar then, right? Exactly. And the crazy yes. thing is now, now you're nearing like an inflection point. The commercialization. Yes. This is. You, you're getting we're going to get we're getting close to the FDA approval, which we're going to talk about, which is yeah. going to be the game changer. This is patents. Yeah. So you have all this amazing, amazing catalysts for really that that massive upside. And they're here now. So this and but and this is again, this is a, the other thing, you know, that, that I talk about in the book is that, you know, the real opportunity in these stocks is 
is to get in. It's it, one of the questions is, you know, why now, right? Anytime you look at a stock, why now? Because a lot of stocks have been around for a while, but why now is the time to get in? Like, what? So, because a lot of times technologies, they were early. They were early to the game. A lot of companies, they're early, right? And then a lot of people, they get all excited at the early stage. They get hyped up. The stocks are crazy valuations. And the irony is by the time they're ready, by the time they're ready to strike, you know, gold, you know, hit that that oil gusher, they give the investors give up, the stocks are beaten down, they're trading at a nickel where you are, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's 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 almost like it's like the the oil analogy. They're drilling for oil and they give up on like like when they're like six inches away from the from from the massive you know oil field, sure. and, and then all of a sudden, you're, you're absolutely right. Gets you're, you're in, absolutely right. And, and, and this and is I think, you, you know the one thing that. The one thing I've learned, Jack, is that there there are no overnight successes. There is no magic. It, it, what uh, what there is 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 the the years and years of of hard work that uh, a team put into developing a product and a company, and it paid to no dividends. Um, and the stock, you know, sat and uh, you know did nothing, did nothing, did nothing, or or even worse, you know, sank to near zero, as in our case. Um, and all of a sudden, quote unquote, overnight, <laughs> the stock, you know, you wake up one day and it's trading at a couple bucks a share, and everybody said, "Wow, look at that overnight success!" No, there was a lot of a, a lot of hard years that went into developing that overnight success story. And I believe we're at that inflection point, as you said, where where that hard, uh, expansive, risky, slow work is behind us now. And uh, and I believe that uh, um, we're ready for that, you know, overnight success story now. <laughs> yeah. And, and here's the thing. I, I think, you know, we're going we're gonna to dive into the fundamentals. I just want to add one thing is, you know, again, one of the things that I look for with, you know, our next super stocks is, you know, I, I'm literally looking for stocks, which I believe could become 10 baggers, right? So we have a different program as yeah. anybody that watches Wall Street Quarter. We have, you know, regular, you know, company interviews. And then we have specifically next super stock, which is, you know, companies which I really do believe have that upside, right? So it's like, and it's not, they can't pay for that. It's not like, you know, like we take anybody. On. I've turned down many companies. Uh, I've probably turned down millions in business over the last mm -hmm. couple of years, but uh, turning away companies, which I didn't think had the 10 bagger mm -hmm. upside. But here's the thing. I find that, you know, what I'm looking for is the companies that are getting into what I call the 10 bagger window. So there's like a kind of a window of opportunity. And again, I talk about that, you know, in the book, 10 bagger blueprint, I'll give it another plug. It's on Amazon, number one bestseller. And uh, the point is this, uh, you, you mentioned something that exactly what happens, you know, the companies they're working and working. And a lot of times these stocks get beaten down to zero. Everybody gives up. And then all yeah. of a sudden they're right at that inflection point. And we had a couple of examples like that. We had um, a company called CBDT went from a nickel where you are to two dollars and fifty cents in six months. I mean, it was a bit of a crazy market, but you know, it it, it was a fifty bagger peak fintech, very yeah. similar. They were doing things for you, and they pivoted. They had multiple business models that pivoted a couple of times. That became a twenty bagger. Uh, so it's mm -hmm. very. I, I think the, the setup is there. Now let's talk about the fundamentals. Now, again, you yeah. have multiple shots on gold. So the, the idea is yeah. you're you're going to be doing other investments in the AI space. Yes. Will they be healthcare related or what other? Uh, they may be, but not necessarily. Um, we are looking at um, uh, uh, possible investments um, in the AI space, but outside of the health tech space. Um, we are also looking at some additional um, uh, potential investments within the health tech space as well, because we, we believe that, that that space is, is still in its infancy as, as are all, you know, uh, um, uh, possible possible uh, areas within AI, yeah. um, so it, it 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 certainly hasn't run its its course. Even though a lot of people incorrectly they they tied the success of health tech and and artificial intelligence in health tech to the pandemic. Oh and, yeah, and, yeah, yeah, no, it's crazy. That's when Teladoc took off. It. But but the yeah. reality is, but those are game changers. Those are generational companies, and yeah. we're going to see. So it's it's really like what's happening in health tech is. Again, it's like it, it, it's interesting. You're at the intersection of two mega trends: the health yeah. tech space and artificial intelligence. And the con convergence of those is yeah. is the intersection. Is I think I think the space you're in is 
this is a multi-billion dollar space. Well, let's talk yeah. about the first unicorn, and that is Health Gauge. Now, I have, I got the, the Health Gauge. By the way, I charged this, and the battery actually, it goes for quite a while. I mean, this because I mm -hmm. charged it about a month yeah. ago. I mean, it's amazing. Wow. So the first yeah. company is Health Gauge. Tim, explain yeah. to us uh, the thesis. I mean, it was, why did you invest in Health Gauge? Now you own 100%, uh, AIML owns 100% of Health Gauge. What does this, yeah. this business do? Okay, so health gauge is in the you know the uh, uh, the wearable health tech space, um, and specifically, um, it it's as you were displaying as I'm wearing mine here now with my uh, my fancy new orange band. Um, what this is is th this is our uh, proprietary um, uh, uh, smartwatch, um, uh, and and the purpose of this is to aggregate um, the 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 uh, biometric signals coming off your body, such as your heart rate, your heart rate variability, uh, your blood pressure, uh, it'll do ECG measurements, uh, oxygen, blood oxygen uh, uh, content, uh, body temperature, uh, and, and more. Um, so it's, it's, it's aggregating all this data from your body um, 24 hours a day, and it's putting it through our proprietary artificial intelligence. And this is, this is the key to this. Um, there's a lot of wearables out on the market. Half the people watching today will hold up their Apple Watch or their Fitbit or their Samsung or whatever it is and say, yeah, mine's better than yours. Um, but here's the problem, not problem, but here's the, the shortcoming with all of those. Um, the, the, the hardware in these wearables will only um, take you so far in terms of accuracy as a, a, a wearable medical device. Um, and that degree of accuracy is, is good enough to give you some general understanding of what's going on in your body, but it's not uh, accurate to what is considered um, a, 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 a medical device. Um, what we are in the process of doing right now, and we're the only company in this process, um, uh, we are uh, taking that raw data that's coming off this, and we're filtering it through our artificial intelligence and through our app on your smartphone. And uh, the results that come out are uh, significantly more accurate. And when I say significantly more accurate, I'm talking 15, 20% more accurate. So in other words, it takes a blood pressure measurement from the wearable from being a, a, a good general indicator of what your blood pressure is. Um, once we filter that through our artificial intelligence, which was developed by our team in-house, it's patented, it's proprietary, nobody else has this. Once we filter it through our artificial intelligence, it brings that degree of accuracy in the range that allows for approval by the FDA as a class two medical device. So it takes it from being a glorified toy, and I'm sorry, but that's that's the 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 the, the quality of, of of medical data that you're getting off an Apple Watch or a Fitbit or a Samsung and so on. You're getting something that that's a step above a, a gimmick or a toy. Um, uh, uh, we're taking that to the next level, which is applying our artificial intelligence and coming out the other end with uh, uh, measurements that meet the FDA's requirement as a medical device, meaning as accurate as the blood pressure cuff that your doctor is putting on you in a hospital, that accurate. Um, so that's the significance of our artificial intelligence and the difference it makes on um, uh, how good our technology is. So our solution, just to, to step back, is a three-part solution. This aggregates uh, some of the, the, the uh, biomedical uh, information from your body. That is then filtered through an app on your phone, our proprietary app, uh, which uh, gives you now uh, at or near medical grade data. Um, and the third part of that is our cloud platform, again, proprietary, that takes all this data that's being aggregated from you wearing your, your wearable, um, and it puts it on that platform and stores it forever. 
that you have access to, your doctor, your pharmacist, your therapist, your family members, whoever you want has access to that data. And, and that is that sets us apart from anybody else out in the marketplace today. And we have the only patent on this also, so, by the way. So there's a couple of, okay, so there's a couple of interesting things. We're going to talk about the patent in a bit because yeah. one of the things we'll talk about in the last interview, and I'm, I, I kind of made that the focus, where, but it's really not the focus of the business. But you, know, you have a patent that covers essentially a very broad patent that covers yes. you know, the, any type of health monitoring in yeah. this entire $20 billion wearables market. The wearables market, those wearable devices, you know, it's a $20 billion market. You look at Whoop, a Fitbit, well, there's a whole bunch of them. There's, I mean, thousands, right? Not thousands, there's whatever, a couple hundred different devices. Sure. But anybody, yeah. can you explain anybody? I think from what I understand is anybody who's using it for to monitor like different health things is actually mm -hmm. violating the, your patent. They're infringing on your patent. It's true. Um, so I see it from you. I, we, we have some very good patent attorneys and uh, – um, what they did at the outset, and I've been through this process before with other companies that uh, that I've funded um, in other areas, uh, biomedical, for example. And um, what the patent attorneys will do at the outset is ask the patent office for you know the the moon and the stars and everything in between. In other words, they'll they'll try to claim patent rights on everything. Literally, the moon and the stars. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And and the patent office will throw out. 95% of, of the claims that, that have been made and you might end up with, you know, one out of, out of, uh, out of a hundred claims that you made and, uh, and you're happy with that. Um, in our case, uh, when the patent office came back, um, we were granted uh, something like 65 of our claims, which covers the gambit. So in other words, the use of a wearable, it, it, it can be a wrist wearable in watch format. It can be in other formats like pendants or sewn into uh, uh, your clothing, or the, there's a lot of other wearables that are coming out into the market. We've got the patent on that. Um, if you're using this wearable device to aggregate uh, data coming off your, your body um, uh, and, and the, the measurements, uh, looking at things like uh, pulse and blood pressure and ECGs and blood oxygen and blood glucose um, and several other things. If your watch does that, that company is infringing on our patent. Um, the, the, the patent office granted us um, uh, the, the patent covering all those things, including, but not exclusively, the use of artificial intelligence to help refine the results coming off that. So whether the wearable is using artificial intelligence, nobody out there is doing it except us, um, uh, or not, um, we've got the patent on it. So basically, you know, the, 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 the bottom line is as a, as a, a, a general blanket statement, um, any company out there that has a wearable that's taking your your pulse or your your uh, uh, respiratory rate or your blood pressure or blood glucose or whatever else they 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 want to be doing with it, we've got the patent on that. Um, and, and, and and Tim, what this means essentially is at some point these companies because they're infringing on the patent and again this twenty billion dollar market, they're going to either your your patent attorneys are going to have to you know. Buy it sue them there's gonna be some sort of settlement there's gonna be royalties paid but really the royalties generally away it's roughly two percent of gross sales usually is what royalties are one person it's somewhere in that range right right of course every contract is on a negotiated basis but i'll give you an example there was a company out of california by the name of medwatch which is developing a similar wearable device to ours but specifically for the blood glucose market with or diabetes market which oh, is and they came, this this is the company that came to you voluntarily right so this yeah. I, I so, think this validates the whole the whole idea that that what you have is is a serious patent because these guys came to you out of the blue they said you know, you'll tell us so i think so this is not so i believe this patent position by itself could make the stock a 10 bagger in my opinion so there's multiple catalysts for this to be a 10 bagger the patent position is this yeah. this could potentially bring in 10 20 million a year in, in, in a royalty income i mean it'll it might take a year or two years to to get all that stuff whatever but it's it, it's built in, into the stock right now but tim i'm sorry to interrupt you tell us what happened no, that's 
that's fine because it, no, and, and and you're right, and it's an exciting story, and it does validate um, what we're what we're stating. Um, so MedWatch developing, you know, blood glucose monitor wearable, which is a huge, huge, uh, hundred billion dollar a year market in the U.S. alone, and they went to patent it. And of course, what they found out is that oh. There's this Canadian company by the name of HealthGage, which already has the patent on it. So they did, they did the right thing. They came to us and said, we're developing this technology. We'd like to, uh, number one, license uh, the technology from you because you have the patent. And number two, work with your tech team uh, because you're obviously ahead of us with respect to the, uh, the, the application of artificial intelligence um, to this sort of, of, of of uh, uh, usage, and uh, and so uh, an agreement was put in place, and and so the agreement um, simply is they're paying us today and have been since this came in place mm, last fall sometime. Uh, they're paying us uh, uh, ten thousand U.S. per month for the life of the patent, so for the next twenty five years, um, plus two percent royalty on their direct sales, plus ten percent royalty on sales of products that they're. Um, uh, uh, developing for third party companies such as Apple Watch and so on, uh, plus, you know, a couple million dollar break fee, plus they're, they're um, uh, relying on some of our artificial intelligence work. So they're paying us on a cost plus basis to help uh, do some of the artificial intelligence development work on their behalf and so on. So um, at no cost, no risk to us. Um, we stand to gain a, a tremendous amount of money uh, from uh, from this, Medwatch. And, this is just one. This is just one tiny company. I mean, so this, this is one company. And, and but here's the best part of all that, Jack. So at their expense, at their risk, they're developing uh, this uh, 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 this product um, and licensing it, uh, uh, the use of it from us. But licensing the use of it only meaning um, we still have the, the rights within that contract to develop our own version of the blood glucose monitoring product. So once they finish their work and, you know, uh, um, uh, and go through, you know, the, the expensive, the risky part, which is uh, uh, what is going on now, the R&D development work, the FDA approval work and so on, once that's done, and, um, and, and, and launch themselves into the market, we have the right, the ability, because it's still our technology um, to, to replicate that and, and come out with our own blood glucose monitoring product as we see fit. Um, so we, we've not been, we've not locked ourselves out of that market. Okay. In fact, we've enhanced our ability to get into that market uh, on their dime, at their cost, at their risk. Um, and, and so, uh, that's, so incredible. We're, we're, that's, really, we're, that's incredible. This is, I, you know, I didn't, this, I don't think people understood this before. No, uh, I'm sure not. Okay. Um, so, so, but, uh, um, uh, so back generally though, speaking about the patent is we were granted this very, you know, broad and deep patent by the patent office, which, which basically covers the use of a wearable to monitor your health. Uh, for the purpose of of understanding and 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 improving uh, your 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 health and your behavior towards your health, um, we have the patent on that. Um, and uh, and and there was a recent example. I think I sent you uh, a a, a, um, um, a link to the article where Apple is going through this right now. You know the 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 the, the Goliath Apple has been sued and is, is lost to a little company because Apple infringed upon the ECG um, uh, uh, technology that was developed by this other little company, which looks very much like HealthGage. And uh, when Apple lost, they, they are on the verge of losing their right um, to sell Apple watches in the U.S. market. That, that's where this stands because they lost this patent case and they appealed it right up to uh, 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 the, uh, the, the White House um, and, uh, um, and they were turned away. Um, and, and so if there's not some settlement, um, which of course is, huge, is a huge logical, uh, uh, yeah, which is the logical solution for things like this, um, Apple literally 
could be forced into a position where they could no longer sell their existing product into the American market without removing this feature, which is one of their big features, which is this ECG monitoring. So that is, it shows you that little companies like Health Gauge can actually take on, you know, the the. And the, let's the, 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 important, the, the yeah. important thing is that people need to understand is that, you know, a lot of people might be thinking, oh well, how do you take on these big companies? Well, it's very easy. There's there are specialized law firms that do patent litigation, where they do it, you know, no money out of pocket. You know, they basically just they do all the work. They however many, they basically take a piece of the action, well, a third or whatever it is of the settlement or whatever comes in, they get a third, but no money out of your pocket or you know, maybe like a minimal, like you pay for, I don't know, uh, uh, court reporter fees, you know, some, some like right. minimal expense or whatever, maybe even exactly. nothing, maybe not even included. But so basically yeah. you have, you could potentially, uh, you know, go after these guys who are infringing on the patent and it could be Apple, it could be, I don't know, is Apple one of them? I guess Apple is there. definitely one of them and Samsung and Polar. You know, so we already have precedents. We already have precedent of settlement here coming in for this Apple deal. We have a, so, you know, I believe, again, I'm not a patent attorney, whatever, but based on the information I have here is, you know, the upside of this patent couldn't be worth for the company, you know, 50, 100 million. Because I'm looking at this, okay, let's say you get, you know, 10 million, 20 million in royalties coming in, settlements, et cetera, you know, discounted cash flow over five years, you know, today, present value, net present value today, you know, 50 million plus, right? So that's one catalyst for the stock being a 10 bagger. And that's not even talking about the business. And again, the, the patent is just, it's, it's not the main event. It's, it's sort of like, you know, it's not like, it's like you're, in you know, Texas, you're in the cattle business and you're in the cattle business. You have all this land. And then, uh, you know, by the way, oh, you drill down and oh, you got this massive oil gusher also. So, yeah. But your business you is know, the cattle business. You know, to me, those, I, I, I like those two, like lottery tickets. They, yeah. they could be huge payouts. But this is a much high probability. But it's not no risk. This is high probability. This is not a, this is like, no, it, it, it's that's right. a real, yeah, this is not yeah, a, yeah. yeah, this is. Yeah, you, no, you're absolutely right. You're right. You're absolutely right. And, and yeah, go ahead. Tim, let's talk about, okay, so the business of health gauge. Okay, let's talk yeah. about, okay, so so there's a couple yeah. of things you mentioned, which I really want to dive into. So so we're still kind of in the early stage here. Uh, there's I want to talk to you about the market opportunity, the applications, and there's multiple applications for this, right? Okay, so Tim, so really uh, what's extremely significant here is a couple of days ago, you announced that you're getting very close to getting FDA, the class two approval for, for the health gauge as a medical device. Can you right. explain exactly what this means, what the significance of this means, what kind of market opportunities this opens up for the company? Yeah, you, you bet. This was huge news for us, even though it was a short news release. Um, it was uh, certainly our most important news release to date. Um, so a class two medical device approval means uh, that the FDA recognizes it as a medical grade product uh, that, that can be used um, as a, a, a doctor would use, you know, uh, the, the, the instruments that he's using in a hospital. No other wearable device out there uh, today has approval as a class two medical device for blood pressure. Um, and so what uh, this testing program did at the University of Alberta was uh, 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 validate um, using the, 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 the same protocol, the same uh, procedures that you follow in the full FDA study, um, you follow a, a smaller group of, of people and, uh, and test your product in a, in a dry run setting. And what we found is that um, uh, our product today, this, this product right here, um, has the same degree of accuracy as the blood pressure cuff that your doctor would use in a hospital, um, uh, it's at that degree of accuracy, um, and uh, and so this study was really really important for us um, uh, uh, because it was at that that proof of concept. Now the next step, final step, is we repeat this study uh, with a slightly larger uh, group of, of volunteers um, and submit those results uh, to the FDA for uh, the final approval as a as a wearable uh, um, class to blood pressure monitor. Um, why is that important to us from the business standpoint and therefore ultimately uh, as a stock investor, why should it be important to your, your viewers out there? Um, we've been in the business development stage for over the last year now with several substantial US-based um, 
uh, companies. Uh, some of them are uh, like large pharmacy uh, chains. Uh, some of them are insurance companies. Some of them are Fortune 500 companies um, who are all waiting for us to receive our final FDA approval uh, as a class two medical device for blood pressure. Um, and we then have, have, have uh, um, moved the, the, the ball over the, 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 the goal line, uh, so to speak, and, and we can now start formalizing uh, contracts with, uh, with some of these companies out there. And, so it's commercialization. Uh, we can start sales. Commercialization. Okay. You bet. And explain, okay, so as, as a class two device now, so it's going to be in these pharmacies, how big is the market opportunity? So there's a couple of different opportunities right. actually for healthcare, but let's just talk about that one first. Right. Okay. Um, the uh, uh, the market opportunity is certainly in the billions of dollars. Um, that when you talk about um, the you know the number of, of of dollars that are spent across America um, by the public um, to you know to 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 either buy or, uh, you know, go to the, the, the pharmacy and buy their own uh, blood pressure cuff uh, or go to their doctor to have their blood pressure measured, um, you, you are talking an industry that, that is in the billions of dollars. Um, we have the ability to replicate that um, in this device here uh, for a fraction of the price. Um, but the significance is, is not only is this device measuring with the same degree of accuracy or within that margin of error, I guess, is, is the, the, the correct way to say it because you're measured against the gold standard uh, uh, medical device that's FDA approved and you're, you're allowed, you know, plus minus uh, small margin of error. Um, we're within that, that acceptable margin of error. Um, um, the, the importance though is that instead of a blood pressure cuff that sits on your closet shelf and the batteries died six months ago and uh, and you just never used again, uh, you're using uh, 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 the blood pressure device all day long, every day, as often as you want, once a minute, if you want. Um, and, it's and, there's, giving, and, there's, and also there's other measurements that it can give you. There's a lot of other oh, stuff. Absolutely. It's very useful. Absolutely. I, yeah, how do you make money with it? What's the business model explain? Is it is it one time? Is it a SaaS? Or how do you make money? Right. Okay. So it, it depends which part of the model. We have multiple revenue streams that we're looking at. We are looking at some substantial uh, retail opportunities, um, sales through uh, pharmacies and, uh, and and other retail chains like that, um, where uh, your viewers will be able to you know walk in, pick up one of these uh, watches. And, uh, and use the app on our phone, and there would be no additional charge uh, for, for doing that. And they're gonna get uh, you know, medical grade feedback um, just by doing that. If they wanna go the extra step, which is um, use of the cloud-based platform and allowing you know, their medical team to have access to that, there is a subscription um, uh, uh, for doing that. So that becomes a SaaS-based model. Um, and sorry? How much? How much? Oh, okay. So on on the retail side, uh, we're looking at uh, uh, five dollars a month subscription uh, on the retail side. On the corporate side, it's uh, it's slightly higher. Um, uh, five bucks a month is, is cheap. Wait, wait. Really so you're cheap. telling me you're telling me basically? Okay. So in theory, and we talked about that. Okay. So in theory, uh, so what do I get for five bucks a month? I, I'm wearing the device and. Anybody who has access to this thing can see what my blood pressure is or whatever. So, right. So not just blood pressure, a full set of, yeah, yeah. of uh, measurements. So your heart rate, your heart rate. Very I, why is it so cheap? Why don't you charge more money? You should charge more, I think. So, you know, we're looking to gain traction in the market with, okay. uh, you know, a, a low entry point pricing. Okay. And, uh, um, you know, once uh, once people understand the the, the value of this, um, you know, we believe that it's very really disruptive. Good. I mean, this is a real, really disruptive medical device. Uh, so it can be used for remote patient monitoring, which is a multi-billion dollar market. Uh, yeah. One thing we talked about earlier is like, you know, you have this thing where somebody might want to buy this for like an, you know, an elderly parent where, yeah. you know, they, they yeah. were the device and you know how they're doing. I mean, you know, you, let's say you live, you know, a different city. Uh, so yeah. I think actually, I think it does two things, you know, is one is obviously, you know, how they're doing, but I think also, 
from a psychological standpoint for, you know, for your parent, it makes them feel better that you actually care enough about them to, to, <laughs> to care, which is by itself is, is a placebo effect, which is very valuable. So uh, I, 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 this could be a real game changer. Um, okay. So how big is the, op so how, we talked about this, the numbers, how big do you think this could be? What, how, how close are you to getting the FDA, uh, the approval on this? Yeah. What's the next step? Um, we're certainly expecting FDA approval to happen um, uh, within the course of this year, 2023. It's sometimes difficult to uh, uh, um, crystal ball gaze when you're talking about uh, relying on, you know, a, a government body for approval like the FDA and, and how long that that might take them. Um, but our um, our uh, uh, FDA agent, uh, you know, we're using a, a large company that does this every day, all day long with companies like ours. Um, and uh, and they have a very good working relationship with the FDA and understanding. And and uh, they're, they're saying, you know, definitely we'll, we'll get uh, uh, through the process uh, this year, 100 percent and probably 80 percent likely that we'll get through in the first half of this. year. So the question is this now here's OK. So the way I'm looking at this. OK, so the odds of, of getting the approval is close to 100 percent. Let's just say 99 percent. Right. Because you know, there's really nothing which would make it not get approved. I mean, we don't want to say, but yeah. let's just say 90, whatever, high probability, right? Yeah. So that's a game changer. That's a catalyst for a repricing, a repricing of the stock, because obviously the valuation of a company, now that you're, you're ready to enter commercialization, it's a, it's okay. So Tim, so how big, so once you get the FDA approval, you know, as, as a class two medical device for health gauge, um, yeah. How big is the opportunity? What can what what will that what could that translate in terms of revenues for for the company? Well, we know that uh, you know the market for uh, measurement of blood pressure is, uh, uh, annually in the U.S. alone is in the billions of dollars. So it's a huge, huge market opportunity. We know from conversations that we've got ongoing with uh, several potential um, uh, uh, distributors uh, for us in the U.S. who are waiting for our FDA approval. Um, that they're ready to commit um, to thousands of units per month um, as a starting point. And so, you know, you can quickly do the, the math if you're talking, you know, several thousands of, of units per month uh, with, uh, um, uh, with us netting out uh, better than $100 per unit. Um, the numbers add up uh, pretty quickly. Uh, so, this is, so this is just the start. And this is just the start. So this is one aspect of the company one application um now okay yeah. so this is the consumer application which you know could be you know you know look you're being very modest i mean you're being i think very conservative you're not saying hey this is gonna be you know billion dollars yeah. i mean if you're actually being quite conservative yeah. uh so i would say i would say you know it's obviously a multi-million dollar opportunity in the first year uh but i believe from the investor standpoint once you get commercialization the first revenues come in I think that's gonna have a could have a, a massive impact on the stock because then people can extrapolate what else you could do. And all of a sudden you have a whole different business. The, yeah. the value is no longer five million. Today you're valued five million at a nickel. I mean, you, you only need to get a few things right, I believe, to get yeah. this to a 25, 50 million valuation. By the way, which is which is nothing. I mean, we're talking yeah. like it's it's not even a big deal. I mean, the company was there before. Um, okay, yeah. so um what about the other applications? I think you you have some B2B application, there were some enterprise type applications are you still oh definitely uh yeah for sure there's again there's, there's several of them that have been in you know the uh business development cycle for the last several months or or year now even um and and again each one of those as a potential revenue stream in and of themselves are, are huge huge market opportunities um you know one that that's been in the development for a while um, is the, uh, the 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 home monitoring market uh, for for seniors, and we are in dialogue with um, a couple of the largest home care uh, uh, nursing um, companies uh, in North America, uh, mm -hmm. who are always looking to you know to supplement their their offerings oh, you yeah. know, to their, their their customer base, and they see our wearable as 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 um, you know, fitting very, very neatly into that market because, you know, there's a lot of seniors that, for example, they need a, a nurse coming, <clears throat> let's say once a week to make sure that, um, 
they're on their meds and to just check their vitals and so on. And that's probably enough. They don't need, you know, uh, daily or, or around the clock care. And so just the, the, the occasional drop by by, uh, by a nurse is, is more than enough. Um, but what happens in the interim? What happens, you know, in the other, you know, six and a half days of the week when, when the nurse isn't there? Um, uh, a product like ours fits that niche very, very well, um, where we're giving that uh, remote patient monitoring, you know, feedback um, to, uh, uh, to the medical staff, uh, to the family members and so on. And, and so <laughs> the, 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 these, these nursing companies, they see this as a huge, huge um, benefit uh, for, for their customer base and are looking to, uh, to integrate our product line um, into their, uh, their, their service care. So it's okay. uh, a, a, a huge, huge opportunity because, you know, again, the, the, the uh, uh, aging well and aging in place um, is the uh, is the new model. You know the the, uh, uh, the the healthcare companies understand that it's not only about um, making people live longer, but a high, higher quality of life, and at the same time reducing costs to the medical system by keeping people in their own homes as long as as possible. And and so a wearable like ours. Is, uh, uh, is is a great tool for helping to achieve those goals. So Tim, I was going to ask you a question I, before I had this, this uh, coughing fit here. Maybe I should get with the device. But okay, so, yeah. so the, this market, the remote patient monitoring market, which you're going to uh, get into, it's a huge yeah. market opportunity. We've had companies uh, that we feature on the program, which the stocks did very well, um, you know, hundred multi hundred million dollar valuations, uh, doing exactly that, right? Um, Absolutely. So this. Um, and how would that how would that business model work, and when can you start? Because I, I mean that's 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 a really disruptive thing. And also, one other thing which is very important that you have, which we talked about before we started this interview yeah. off the air, is so basically the whole idea is you're an AI company at the core. You, you, the specialty is AI, right? You're getting this data coming in from all these pages. So you're aggregating this big data. You have the machine learning aspects. Because again, the name of the company is artificial intelligence, machine learning, AI, ML. And exactly. so you're, ag you're, you're taking all this, these massive data sets from, you know, thousands and thousands of patients. Now, all of a sudden, your AI and, and the ML, it, it could essentially, because it's learning constantly, it's get, getting all this data. It could send a signal to the doctor if it detects a certain pattern that sure. could essentially something that could lead up to an emergency, whatever. But the idea yeah. is your device, if it keeps people out, this is what I learned from the other company, because that, that was a big game changer for them is if the device keeps people out of the emergency room, right? That's yeah. worth uh, 500 grand a year for the insurance companies because yeah. every time somebody ends up, uh, you know, uh, one of these chronically ill people uh, in, uh, it, it, it's, you know, it's extremely expensive. And if they yeah. could pay you, you know, 50 bucks a month or whatever it is for the remote patient. And it could alert the doctor. That's the whole thing. The AI, if it could alert the doctor, hey, this guy, you know, this got diabetes and, you know, we're getting this data coming in that his heart, I, I'm not a doctor. I don't, whatever, what, but there's an algorithm that you have, which tells you, okay, yeah. these are the signs that, you know, sends an alert, boom. Right. So there, there's two aspects to that, Jack. One is, um, you know, the, the long-term behavior modification, which is, you know, most important. In other words, getting our weight down, getting more exercise, getting our blood pressure under control and, and so on. And so what our device is able to do and is give, you know, immediate and actionable uh, feedback to the wearer on a constant basis um, to help modify that behavior, help modify our lifestyle before the heart attack hits or the stroke hits or that sort of thing. So that's one aspect of it. And, and of course, that's, you know, the, the, the best scenario is, 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 you know, cutting these things off at the pass before they happen. Um, and, and our device is, is, is very, very good at doing exactly that, giving you that daily constant feedback that you need to make better choices in your life. Um, but you run into situations where that's not possible. Um, I'll give you a real life example. Uh, one of my friends and who's also a, a health gauge uh, user um, was uh, down in Mexico 
this past fall, not long ago, and uh, on a golf vacation, and out on the middle of the uh, the golf course, middle of the day, and uh, uh, just really, you know, didn't feel right. He was he was dizzy, he uh, pounding headache, something was off. Um, looked at his device. The feedback that it was giving him was that his you know his blood pressure was way up. Uh, his heart was was uh, beating very rapidly. His temperature was up. Um, so he immediately got off the, the golf course, went into emergency, and uh, and and you know the end of the story was is that they said, yeah, good thing you got in here when you did because you were having a heart attack. Um, so th this device uh, actually helped uh, um, give him that immediate feedback uh, that that he needed. Now he was feeling it. He you know he wasn't feeling right, um, but for most of us, you know. Uh, we're guys, so we shake it off. Oh, I don't feel right. Uh, I'll walk it off. I'll feel better later. Um, what changed his mind was that when when he you know took the measurements on the watch, he saw that his numbers were out of whack, and that's what scared him enough to immediately get into the hospital, and uh, and it might have saved his life. As step one, as step two, he he uploaded all that data to his platform. And his doctor, who was back in Toronto, his, his guy was on a, a golfing vacation to Mexico. Um, so he, he, he sent all that data on the platform uh, back to Toronto to his doctor, who looked at it and was able to uh, remotely uh, see and understand what was going on and confer with the doctors in Mexico, you know, to, to you know, give him the best medical care uh, remotely. And so, you know, a real live example of how this uh, is able to uh, give you that, that, that immediate feedback um, to, to help you make better decisions. The next step going forward, using our artificial intelligence, um, we will have the ability, uh, and, and it's got to go through, you know, the proper, you know, testing and trials to do it. But, but our guys know that we have the, the capability of doing this is taking it to the next step, which is the ability to, to look at all this aggregated data of you personally, you know, because it's been monitoring you for the last, you know, month or year and seeing what's going on and telling you maybe a month before a heart attack happens that, you know what, Jack, it's time to get in to see your doctor because, you know, we're picking up some stuff here that, that's really irregular and, uh, you know, it's time to do something about it before before it's too late. Um, we know we have the capability of, of uh, uh, answering those sorts of questions going forward. We're not, we're not there yet, but our artificial intelligence uh, uh, will definitely be able to uh, uh, help prognosticate, not just after the fact, not, not waiting for a problem to arise and then telling you get to the doctor, but helping you make those life and death decisions you know before the fact before they actually happen so we're th those are uh, on the uh, on the whiteboard those are being developed now as the next phases of our artificial intelligence going forward so so there's there's really some huge applications uh, many probably which we haven't covered yet uh but i think the big concept i think the big takeaway from today's interview i think which is important for people to understand which i'm looking at when I look at AIML, to me, the investment concept is, is essentially you're this AI unicorn farm, right? You're, you know, you're basically, you're, you're, you're a venture development company, right? You've made, you're, the goal of the company is to make investments in, you know, companies that are nearing commercialization uh, right. with a focus on AI, starting with the healthcare air in the health tech area, like you've yeah. done with, you know, health gauge, uh, also tech to heal, which I don't know if we're going to have time to even talk about that one because we're already at an hour in this interview. Uh, but but there's multiple shots on goal. Uh, any of these could be unicorns, like literally multi-billion dollar valuations. And the yeah. upside from an investor is, hey, you're, you're, the you're basically paying five million bucks for the company, the whole company. It's five at five cents. You're, the valuation is only five million. You only need yeah. to not even you only need to get just a little bit right to move the needle in a big way, which we've seen countless times. I mean, every one of our 10 baggers um, that we've had. 
those weren't companies that all of a sudden they hit it right. And, and the, no, they got things just a little bit right because, you know, they were the stocks were so beaten down and they were already at that point where they're getting close to the commercialization that the, the profit was built in. Basically, it's almost like I've used this metaphor before, which I think, Tim, you, you, you'd appreciate is like, you know, it's almost like um, I posted a video. It's almost like, you know, in uh, you know, you ever walk in. Uh, uh, midtown manhattan like on second avenue in midtown you know you see these like little three-story buildings right yeah. you know and, yeah. and you know the reality is at some point all those three-story buildings they were all getting knocked down to build a 70-story high rise right, That's right. That's right. <laughs> so the guys buy these little buildings because they're in the way of the all they got to do is just hang out they just got to wait because it's the profit is built in they just got to wait it's going to happen either in two years a year six months at some point a developer is going to come to them and say look I'm going to buy this, your little building. I'll give you $25, $50 million for it just to knock it down. And, and the same thing here. Basically, you have this built. Anybody who's buying the stock, essentially the profit is built in. They just got to wait. Which one of these things is going to take off? Which sure. one of these is going to become the unicorn? Which is going to be the catalyst that's going to move it? Is it going to be the, the B2B side? Is it going to be the phase two meta? I don't know. I, I actually don't know. But I know it's going to, if one of these things moves the needle, it, the stock could really pop. Again, none of this is investment advice. You know, this is we're not making any any prognostications or whatever. This is high risk. It's venture. It's a literally public venture capital. That's what this is. Sure. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Tim, I the one thing I, I yeah. the one thing I'd like to add to that, Jack, which was you know a good analysis, uh, um, you know from the investment standpoint, and, and one other important point I, I think uh, to add is, is that down at these price levels. Um, you know, th th this is literally the bargain basement pricing. Unfortunately, I, you know, I can tell you that um, all of the insiders, myself included, the founders of, of HealthGage and everyone else are in at about five times the, the current price. Um, and so uh, 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 down at these levels, um, investors getting in at these levels are, are getting in, you know, cheaper than uh, than than. Uh, than uh, anybody has, you know, to this point. Um, to use another, to use another real estate metaphor, okay, uh, is like, uh, you know, a couple of years ago, or anybody remember a couple of years ago in markets like, uh, you know, fast growing markets, you know, fast growing markets like Phoenix, Las Vegas, you know, prices went a little bit crazy, right? And, and you had all these foreclosures, and and prices dropped of real estate down to like below, uh, of, okay, I bought a place that was like below fifty dollars a square foot. Which was below right. replacement cost, below eh, whatever, and were the people who who bought original? They were right. The trend was, but yeah. it's the same thing here. So in other words, right now, anybody who's buying this, the stock yeah. now, it's almost like they're buying that Las Vegas real estate at 2011 prices at, at 50 bucks a foot, and now it's 250 a foot. I mean, obviously the market's a little bit inflated, whatever. I don't, and I don't know. That's one market. It could be other, you know, Vancouver's, you know, <laughs> some crazy. Who knows what yeah. prices there? But it's the same idea, basically. The guys who are getting in here, they're essentially getting, they're getting it free basically for all the hard work that's done by the company, the investors, the founders. Now this is the the great opportunity. This is this is basically what. And by the way, this is what the ten bagger blueprint is about: is to picking up these type of bargains. Uh, Tim, let's wrap up on one of your other potential baby unicorns that you have in the company, which is uh, Tech Two Heal. Let's just do a yeah. quick summary on that because we're not going to have time okay. to get into the whole thing. But what is that company? The investment that you made there. Yeah, I'd love to because uh, it is important for, for your, your viewers to understand um, a little bit about that as well because it has equally as, as huge potential. So Tech to Heal is based out of Paris, France. Um, uh, they have a, a remote patient monitoring platform that has been designed from the ground up specifically for the mental health care market. Um, uh, we own of 10% uh, 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 of their global assets. Um, and we own 75% uh, of the North American rights, which is our sweet spot uh, in North America. Um, and uh, they came out with- The their, mental health problem is in North America. It's not in Europe, it's in North America. Uh, uh, sorry, say again? I said I the, big, the big mental health problem oh, yeah. is in North America. It's not in Europe, yeah, you so the opportunities yeah. here. You bet. You bet. So, so us owning, you know, uh, the seventy percent or the seventy-five percent, actually, of the, the North American market is, uh, um, uh, you know, that that's the big basket. That that's the uh, the pot of gold. Um, so that that's what we were after. 
Um, it's nice to have, you know, a, a, a piece of the global market, but but clearly the U.S. market dominates. There's no no doubt about it. Um, they uh, uh, they finished the development of the remote patient monitoring platform, which is uh, very unique um, in the, uh, the the design and, and build of it. And I'm not going to get uh, into the weeds uh, and bore your viewers with the the, the technical side of that. Um, but I can tell you this, that, that they unveiled what's called the, the MVP, the minimum viable product or the 1.0 version of the product late last year and uh, introduced it at um, the health tech conference in Paris in January. So one month later, um, and that, that health tech conference for mental health is the, you know, the CES of, 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 of France. This is the biggest you know, health con uh, uh, tech conference um, in Europe and uh, and specializes in health tech. Um, uh, uh, tech to Heal's new platform won the grand prize as the best new technology. Um, that's the uh, 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 the significance of this um, in the uh, 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 in, in the minds of the, the 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 judges that saw this technology at the health tech show. They are in the process right now of um, they are in front of some of the um, biggest and best um, medical uh, uh, companies in Europe and in South America and in Asia who are um, playing with this, you know, kicking the tires, so to speak, on their platform. And the feedback they're getting is phenomenal. And uh, um, there's going to be a whole big series of announcements uh, we're anticipating starting, you know, uh, within the next month or so and, 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 uh, and carrying on for several months. With, we're, we're expecting several significant uh, industry players that, uh, uh, that are going to be, you know, uh, um, uh, wanting to partner with uh, um, Tech to Heal on their patient monitoring platform. Um, that's the sort of feedback that they're getting from, you know, the uh, uh, um, the early studies and pilots that are going on with these various users. So uh, we're really, really excited by the potential. And I urge your, your viewers to, you know, stay tuned for, you know, a, a, a series, uh, we hope, of, of significant announcements on tech to heal contracts. Um, you know, over the upcoming months. It's, it's looking very, very now, positive. Tim, let's wrap up on this. So uh, early on, you said that the idea of, you know, AI ML, which, you know, again, artificial intelligence, machine learning, uh, you know, you started the company four years ago with a focus on yes. really developing, uh, in, you know, sort of next generation technologies with a focus on AI. And again, this is years before, you know, AI now is the hot thing and it's going to be a hot thing for, for quite a while. Uh, but the idea is to have multiple shots of gold. You're develop, you have a portfolio approach. So you're taking a portfolio approach. You have the first two companies. What, I mean, is there any, are there any other potential investments, any, mm -hmm. any other transactions that, you know, could, you could be making in the AI space, uh, you know, in the next couple of months? Um, there very well could be. We, we've got a number of, um, you know, different potential acquisitions that we've been um, in the due diligence process uh, with for a while. And uh, we could uh, quite conceivably um, see, um, you know, one or more of those, you know, come through to fruition over the next couple of months. Um, um, we are we are close on a few of them and they are every bit as, as exciting as the companies that we've already invested in. Um, so and and, and um, they're not necessarily uh, in the health tech area. They are uh, it, definitely um, in the uh, AI ML uh, arena, okay. Okay. Um, but, uh, but not. That's very uh, interesting. Okay. So other, other, other AI deals in the works, other AI investments. Now, let's be realistic. I mean, I don't know if I'm speaking out of turn, but I would think you're probably waiting for the stock price to improve a little bit before you can close those deals. Sure. I, don't, it, yeah, it, I mean, look, let's be realistic. I mean, am I right? Yeah, you are. You know, it's it's a bit of a tightrope walk where, um, you know, to make you your, very your, creative. I mean, you could do something here, but you'd have to be super creative not to have dilution, and that's the last exactly. thing. That, 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 exactly. Right. Yeah. So, and so we're we're that. we're always you know um, uh, uh, you know keenly aware of that that we don't want to 
to do something today that that's uh, you know overtly dilutive. Um, um, and and so we're trying to you know add to the value of the company, um, which of course w- would hopefully reflect in you know the fundamental value of the market cap, um, but at at the same time do it in a non dilutive way. So so it's a little bit of a tightrope walk. It would be a whole lot easier decision if we were back trading at a dollar or, or higher. Um, you know I could close on a couple of these opportunities very oh. very quickly. Okay. Um, oh okay 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 so. Okay, so okay, so you can close on a couple of opportunities quickly. You're saying if the stock was higher. Now, right. let's say the stock right. was twenty five cents. Would you mm-hmm. be able to do a deal? It it, it certainly um, uh, uh, much more attractive at, at those price levels for sure. By the way, we're um, and, very and, and I believe that they set up big valuations, I, I, and I don't see them being uh, dilutive at those levels because if we were, let's say, you know, issuing stock. Uh, at 25 cents a share, I believe that the uh, the, the the projects that we're looking at um, potentially taking on would add more value than that. Um, so okay, so um, <laughs> so I, I, I don't see them as being dilutive, but at the, you know at the same time we we don't want to do it down at these prices. Yeah, but here's the reality: is I think look the company, uh, you know the the way I look at it, you got multiple shots on goal. Any of these things that you're working on right now. If you get just a little bit of traction in any one of them, you know the stock price could pop. So the key thing is is that you know what I find is again I talk about you know not to plug the book I talk about this in the book is the key thing is when the stock is moving I find it very important for the CEO to take advantage of that momentum. You have to have a plan in place. You know like you know you got to have a plan in place so when the, if this when the if and when the stock does pop it goes up 10x. You have an a, 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 an acquisition, you, or you could do a cap something at that level to take the stock to the next level or to keep the momentum going. I find it's very frustrating to me. I've seen a lot of CEOs, you know, they've dropped the ball. The stock took off. The stock became a fifteen bagger, twenty bagger, fifty bagger, and uh, you know they didn't have anything lined up. Uh, the smart guys do have stuff lined up, so I hope you do have stuff lined up. So when the, if, if and when the stock does pop. Again, I'm not saying, not making any prognostications, advice, whatever. But if and when the stock, let's say, does pop 25, 50 cents or whatever, or even a dollar, you have, you can close a couple of these deals and all of a sudden that takes to the next level. Sure. I, you know, I, uh, having a, a higher stock price um, is not the, uh, uh, you know, the end of the road for us. That, that just gives me, you know, a bigger stick to wield, uh, to close some of the bigger deals that I ultimately ultimately okay would, uh, would like to take down so that's that's good okay so bottom line is that you have stuff in the pipeline is what i'm trying to definitely okay yeah. so the stuff in the pipeline <clears throat> if the stock does move it, you could take advantage okay uh tim let's wrap up on this um a couple two two things one is what kind of news flow you know can investors look forward to in the next you know short term the next let's call it six weeks you have any any thing that pending of significance um, I, I, I believe we do. Um, uh, particularly, I, I, I think we're going to see the biggest news flow in the next short while is off the tech to heel side, because as I said, they're they're um, in front of um, several significant uh, potential strategic partners uh, throughout Europe and other parts of the world, and the feedback that they're getting is uh, is, is tremendous. Um, and it's not one or two. It's uh, um, you know there's a significant number of uh, uh, of uh, business development uh, um, negotiations underway there. And so I'm very hopeful that we've got um, a, a, a pretty steady stream of uh, news coming out, um, all uh, um, uh, contract related, either. Uh, uh, pilots leading to commercialization or straight into commercialization on, on a number of fronts on the tech to heel side and on the health gauge side um, same thing they've got a number of things that have been in development for a while and a couple of those have um, um, I, I, I think are just down to you know the fine points of, of uh, you know completing the the, the, the structuring of the deal um, but uh, and, it, and it's been a while coming with these but they're well worth it because they're, they're significant um, projects for the company and so so I think on on both sides on both the the, the health gauge and tech to heal 
fronts, uh, I'm expecting, you know, over the, the, the weeks and months, we should finally start to see the, the, the rollout of the, uh, uh, you know, strategic partnerships that these companies uh, have been uh, working dil diligently to develop for the last many, many months, finally coming through to fruition here. So should so, be exciting time for us. Tim, last question. Um, so, you know, which I haven't asked you in a while, but this is one of our favorite questions here. Um, in your opinion, what are the top three reasons why investors, you know, should consider mm -hmm. AIML stock today? Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, and there's obviously a, a lot more good reasons than, than that. But uh, one is that we've touched on many times here is that um, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the deal has been de-risked substantially. We're trading at a, a micro cap. Um, the, the hard work, the expensive, slow work uh, of product development is behind us. And we've now turned that corner into business development. And we're expecting, you know, a, a steady stream of, of exciting new developments on that front. Um, so uh, that's a, a very good reason to be investing in us. Um, we're, in, uh, uh, we're in the sweet spot, uh, you know. Um, while we were uh, early adopters of AI ML uh, several years ago, um, it's now on everybody's lips. It, it's it's the flavor of the week. Um, people are doing a, 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 a double take, a, you know, a second look at companies that are AI ML focused. And so I do believe that we are uh, in the right place at the right time with respect to our overall business model uh, being the artificial intelligence space. Um, and I believe that the, the, we're at that same cusp uh, with respect to the health tech market, where um, in the early days, health tech was flying high. Then the, uh, the pandemic ended, and a lot of people thought that, that the potential for health tech would die with the pandemic. And so the, the market troughed out, <clears throat> and companies like ours you know, troughed out with it. And, uh, um, and all of a sudden... Um, it's having a, a, a resurgence where people are understanding that um, the need for uh, uh, revolution in the healthcare industry hasn't gone away just because the pandemic has gone away. And so all of a sudden, health tech companies like ours, uh, um, like HealthGage and, and tech to heal are enjoying a, a resurgence where, where investors are taking a, a, a hard look at us again. So I think we're in that perfect storm scenario where we're cheap, the, the big risk is behind us, and we're in the right sectors at the right time. So those are good reasons to be an investor in us right now. Yeah, definitely. Uh, you know, AI is 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 big theme for the year, and and you know, health tech, you know, tele, <coughs> excuse me, Teladoc is, you know. A, a, an amazing company and it's one of kathy woods you know the arc funds that's one of her favorite uh holdings uh she's been very bullish and on the health tech thing way before the pandemic that was kind of a you know outlier event but without that that that, that thing would you know probably got a little bit ahead of itself uh yeah. but uh yeah she's a major believer in health tech as you know one of the key sectors to be in. and and aml you're again like we said you're at the intersection the two yeah. biggest the two biggest mega trends, health tech and artificial intelligence. Uh, Tim, with that said, thank you uh, for the update. And we're going to be catching up with you in a live stream of uh, with some audience q in the next couple of weeks. Uh, and uh, we will see you then, hopefully with some good news. All right. I appreciate you having me on the show, Jack. I, it's always enjoyable. And look forward to getting together real soon with some more good news for you. Thank you, Tim.